Market Blaster, where we blow apart the stock market and put it back together so that it makes sense for you. I'm um, Forbes Markets Editor John Dobas. We've got with us today. Agustino Fonteveca here from the Markets Desk. How are you, everybody? We got some macro news, and Agustino writes day in and day out multiple times about global macro themes. Zum Deutschland gehen wir am Erste. Where in the Bundestag, the Parliament of Germany approved something that Angela Merkel really wanted, and it was to, designed to help Greece. Tell me about it. Well, it was completely necessary for them to approve this. Everybody knew it was going to happen. At the end of the day, what they said is that they have parliamentary approval for the second bailout of Greece. And it's something we all expected. There's still talk about how much resistance she had within the political yep. spectrum and in her center right coalition. But this is just what we expect. It's going to move forward. And this is just going to pave the way for the second bailout and see how that moves forward. Still got big problems down there. And Germans, are, are, what do they feel? They feel like they're throwing good money after bad? They're well, actually well, going to pay that's exactly off. what's going on. They're, they're just essentially complaining that they're saying, what the hell are we doing? Why are we funding these people that keep on spending all our money and they're not solving any problems? Because they buy their goods. Exactly. They buy their goods. But there's one last thing we have to remember, that the most important piece of the puzzle right now is the PSI, the public sector involvement thing. How much do um, they want a haircut to, so the investors to take? The haircut's going to be about 70% uh, net par value. Well, good. Um, but, but, but the problem right now is getting everybody on board. Um, they're expecting, they need 95% of the people to be on. Uh, they're expecting to be way lower and they're going to have to use these collective action clauses, CACs, which are going to spark CDS and there's going to be some trouble in the markets. But uh, I'm so frightened. I'm so but I'm not because on December 19th, the LTRO made, gave them a three-year window in which they could operate and find some wiggle room. But what you're saying today is this was just something, if it didn't get passed, then we might have worried. But well, and so it well. will get passed because the Germans are pushing to get it passed. These LTROs, they call them LITROs in some places, uh, LITRO, leader in your... Uh, yeah, long-term uh, refinancing uh, Yeah, so what this is going to do, when it happens, it's going to just eliminate the fact of a credit crunch in the immediate moment. Germany's doing fine right now, as you see right here. Look at that stock, the EWG, which tracks Germany. Uh, EWQ tracks France, the Germans and the French. Doing okay. Stocks Ooh. are doing all right. Refinery right there. That's Brings us to the topic right of oil. That's a good refinery. Thing. Nice. Very pretty, but very essential, too. We've had refineries. Well, not dangerous. enough of them. Well, what's going on? This is kind of thing Straight right Straight moves. Yeah. 15 miles across. Uh, if there's conflict, we've got 20% of the world's oil that could be cut. Not you know, not only 20% of the oil, 60% of Asians' oil uh, imports. And it's been driving crude oil prices higher. Uh, back a little bit down today, 108 a barrel. The USO tracks West Texas Intermediate Crude pretty faithfully. Um, look at the, that's since October 3rd about a 45% gain in crude oil prices. Uh, and you know what, if you look in Brent and you look in Euro uh, values, you you're know. actually seeing it hit all time highs. More risk week. in Europe, yeah. Uh, what way to play would, would be the oil services companies, right? Look at that nice run from about 36 bucks end of December to uh, 44, 45 bucks right now, not bad. Right, right, and they, they, they benefit from a lot of activity and there's a lot of offshore activity going on right now, so. We got this guy, Peter Way, he does a newsletter for us called Block Traders ETF, uh, 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 I'm sorry, he does an ETF letter and a gold and energy report. This is the gold and energy report. He ranks stocks based on how block traders at big trading firms hedge their exposure to them when they're trading them for big clients. And it wor it's worked out in the past very well. So here you have upside, uh, downside price risk here, and you have upside price reward here. What you want is something low and out to the right. So 16, 22, 10, those are good ones right here. One of them is the Continental. Christopher Walken? No, Continental <laughs> Resources. Nice little stock there. CLR, check out CLR. Barry Petroleum, another exploration and production company, ranked uh, pretty highly there for risk and reward trade-off. 54 bucks, new high. Don't be afraid of the new heights. Swift Energy, SFY, we're talking about 31 bucks, pulled back from 35, might be a chance here resting at the uptrending 50-day average to jump in. So oil, Germans, the economy's still doing well. I think everybody's gonna be looking fine going forward. Risk on, baby. <laughs>